Why does training indoors feel so much harder? Is your FTP actually higher outdoors? And should you account for this in your training? Anyone who has done any amount of indoor training will know that riding indoors feels so much harder than riding outdoors. Now things have improved in this area dramatically in the last 10 years or so with the advent of smart trainers and virtual reality ecosystems that you can do your training in and also just a better understanding of why it feels so much harder. So assuming you're riding indoors to ride better outdoors, then understanding how indoor riding simulates outdoor riding and how it doesn't is vital. So let's dive on into why your FTP might be higher outdoors, whether this is a good thing or a bad thing and what we can do about it. First, what is FTP? FTP stands for Functional Threshold Power, and it is a number used for assessing and prescribing your exercise intensity. To put it more simply, it's a power number to prescribe your power zones. It's helpful to think of it like max heart rate for prescribing your heart rate zones, or your 10 kilometer run PB for prescribing your run pace zones. And like your 10K run PB, it's not set in stone. It can change. And also, like your 10K run PB, if you use a number from 15 years ago when you were in college, it's not gonna do your fitness much good. In fact, your FTP will change all the time, daily even. To make it functional, we use an estimate of it and then verify it occasionally to make sure it's still accurate. This is what makes it a functional threshold power, not an absolute threshold power. So given all of that, what we are discussing here is the difference between FTP indoors and outdoors. And you probably already surmised from all of this that there will be a difference, but is it big enough to matter? And should we do anything about it? It's worth remembering that indoor riding is at its core designed to simulate outdoor riding. Now, these days it's become a bit of a sport of its own. There's even e-cycling world championships, but most people still use it to simulate and train for outdoor riding. So therefore, the question of how accurate your indoor FTP is compared to your outdoor FTP really comes down to how accurately your indoor setup simulates your outdoor setup. We all know that indoor riding doesn't simulate the mental stimulation of riding outdoors. I mean, there's less external distractions, there's less sense of achievement because you don't actually go anywhere. And then it can just be plain boring. But even talented individuals that can stay perfectly focused indoors still have to lower their FTP. So there must be more going on here. Well, there are actually two main aspects to this. We've got the environmental factors and also biomechanical factors. If you could perfectly simulate outdoor riding indoors, then environmental factors wouldn't be a factor, but you can't. And the big one here is airflow. Even with a big fan or multiple fans, the airflow around your body simply won't be the same as the complete body airflow that you get outdoors. On top of this, it will normally be warmer indoors, unless your indoor setup is in a shed in the yard. But even that will warm up as you train. And because it's warmer with less airflow, you will sweat more, which could lead to dehydration, which further can affect your cooling. So whilst riding indoors might be preferable than doing long miles in the rain, snow, ice, and whatever weather you might experience during the winter, it's not optimal for a high FTP. Then there are the biomechanical differences. And this is the big difference maker. Indoor setups have come a long way, but even if you use the same bike, there will be a lot of biomechanical differences from your outdoor ride. Yeah, I mean, your bike won't move underneath you like it does outdoors, so you won't be able to use your upper body muscles or such a broad set of muscles to generate that power. Instead, a smaller set of muscles are gonna have to work harder to find that power. Also, with less rest intervals. Now, rocker plates can help with that, but not perfectly. Also, your trainer will often be level or even actually tilting downwards. When it comes to measuring FTP outdoors, often we'll actually do this uphill. 
more for safety than anything, but also studies have shown, particularly with pros, that they can produce around 0.4 to 3.6% more power when climbing uphill when compared to on the flats. Now, again, there is tech that can go in that front wheel space that would simulate climbing for indoors, but not everyone has access to that tech. Now, outdoors, your power output tends to be a little bit more variable with resistance dead spots and little micro breaks, which actually help with muscle recovery. Whereas indoors, that resistance tends to be more constant. Now, flywheels have actually improved over the years to better simulate outdoors, but still not perfectly. Your flywheel will provide resistance at different points in the pedal stroke to what you're used to when riding outdoors. Now, you will, of course, have noticed that we're on the True Kinetics trainer and their True Bike, which work very differently to your ordinary trainer. They don't have a flywheel in them. Instead, they use advanced robotics to provide that resistance sampled at 1,000 times a second to better simulate that outdoor riding. So a big step forward in technology. So what should you do and not do when it comes to indoor versus outdoor FTP? Well, first, adjust your expectations. Don't expect your indoor FTP to match your outdoor FTP. It should, arguably, be lower indoors. Now, there's no exact calculation for this, but normally you should see differences of around five to even 60% for more recreational cyclists. But for well-trained cyclists, it's normally in the region of five to 10%. Now you can test your FTP indoors and have another one outdoors, but you don't need to. Having two sets of zones, one for indoors and one for outdoors, is confusing and clunky and it's just not worth it. Rather, test your FTP indoors, where it's easier and safer to do that FTP test, and then use those zones for everything. You'll actually probably find that for most intervals, the zone that you need to hold is broad enough that you can go the top of the zone outdoors where your FTP might be a little bit higher, and the bottom of the same zone indoors for when it's a little bit harder. But of course, you can correct this just by using heart rate, breathing rate, and your perceived exertion. Make sure your setup and environment simulates the outdoors as closely as possible. So invest in a good trainer and a fan. And don't use erg mode all the time. Most people find riding in erg mode actually harder than not riding in erg mode. Although it is easier to stick to your zones because you don't get those micro variations all the time in your power. You don't get those little dead spots where you get to recover. It can also make you lower your natural cadence, which can increase the feeling of fatigue. And finally, having something to concentrate on actually makes the session go faster. So mindlessly sitting on erg mode can make the session feel like it really drags. Well, all of this probably leaves us asking one fairly important question. Does training indoors practically prepare ourselves for outdoor riding and racing? The answer is yes and maybe no. Training indoors is an excellent tool. It's very good for training. You can do very specific sets and stick very closely to specific zones. However, if you're training for a race that is outdoors and you want to target your FTP or a certain percentage of your FTP, then that needs to be your outdoor FTP. There is no point using your indoor FTP to set those outdoor zones because as we've said, it'll be a little bit different. And you need to have trained at that specific intensity even if it's indoors for that outdoors race. It's a bit like training for climbing a mountain by only ever training by climbing stairs. You will get some benefits and get fitter and stronger, but you'll certainly be missing some crucial aspects that are needed for climbing a mountain. Yeah, and you should note as well that as you get used to training indoors and the challenge it presents, that gap may narrow a bit. Is that because you've got stronger at riding indoors or relatively less strong outdoors? Oh, that is the question. Let us know if you've tested your FTP indoors and outdoors and if they are different or how different they are or whether you just go for the indoors one and use it across the board. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, hit that thumbs up button to support the channel and don't forget to subscribe.